All right. It says that we're broadcasting, so uh, it's time to get started. So what this is, is this is a, a film directing pre-production. Uh, first steps for uh, beginning filmmakers, and we're creating a course. The course has been something that I've been thinking about for a while. I outlined some bullet points and some ideas to, uh, to work from a question, uh, live interview kind of point of view, and passed it off on to award-winning editor Michael Swantek, and, uh, and he put some more questions and some bullet points to it. And so we're still in process on this. So what I wanted to do is to share the process with anybody who might uh, be stumbling upon this record. We're going to break this into segments. I'm not exactly sure um, how many segments it will be, but uh, in an effort to be transparent and to take a look at how we do this kind of thing, uh, we're sharing. So, um, hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, good. John? I'm good. good. So it's about 2.41 right now. My, my iPhone is about out of power, so I'll have you help me keep track, too. I've got to wrap this up, you know, 3.30, 3, you know, 3.40, something like that. And so we can pick up, you know, wherever we left off tomorrow or some other time, uh, sure. you know, depending on how well we do. Yeah. So I know I had an opportunity to, uh, to look over um, what you did uh, last night or yesterday, whatever it was. Um, but what I was thinking is maybe we could start right from the first module, and if you could just, you know, maybe give us an an overview of um, uh, either the the piece from your point of view or just that module, um, to kind of orient, you know, get us grounded in where we're at. Sure. Um. So here, let me um. Let me bring the first module up on screen. Okay, I think I can click on you right here. Oh, I am clicked on you. There we go. You just so, froze, and there it is. Okay, got it. So the first module um, basically is just the introduction to the course, and it's the gist is to basically, for whatever reason, someone wants to become a film director. Um, it doesn't matter what the reason is. This day and age, um, tools are affordable, um, and it's never been more accessible. So basically, this is telling anyone that even has that little seed planted right. of, I kind of want to be a filmmaker or a film director. Um, this is basically saying, you can do it. Gotcha. So, so I think, yeah, when, when I was thinking about this module, I was coming from the point of view that there are a lot of types of films, a lot of opportunity for people to share their voice, people who have an idea, um, even if it's documentary or short film or feature film idea, that there's never been a time uh, that has made it easier in so many ways to make a film. And um, so that's what this module addresses, right? Yeah. You know, and then it also just kind of brings up a couple things that will be addressed later on um, in the piece, like, um, are you going to do it for fun? Are you going to take a more serious approach? Um, is this something you want to do to make a profit? Or is this something you want to do to share with family and friends? You know, so it's basically just, it's, it's also introducing a few other um, topics that will be addressed in other modules. Right, right. So, so we're really laying the groundwork early on to say, yes, everybody can make a film, but at some point, depending on what you have for expectations, it's important to decide, you know, what path you want to move down. So this really begins setting that up, right? Correct. Yep. So I notice you've got down the, okay, filmmaking has never been more accessible. Okay, these are some of the bullet points you just read through. Stop making excuses. I'm too old, too young, too poor, too far from Hollywood. Yeah, right. We don't have to be anywhere near Hollywood. Um, to, yeah. And I think one of the things that I want to maybe set up here is the idea that, you know, the idea of the word film, you know, short film or any kind of filmmaking has expanded so much. You know, there's junk on YouTube, yes, and that's not what we're talking about. 
but having a voice and being able to tell your story on YouTube or anywhere else you know, is something that is important. You know, it's, it's right. something that I think uh, it's important to the filmmaker. And we want to acknowledge that filmmaker as well as the filmmaker who may want to go to Hollywood someday and uh, address some sort of a path and, and uh, you know, the forks in the road and, and an overview of the, of the land for those folks. One of the things I wanted to do, Mike, is we could look at that document again. Um, yeah. I just want to orient myself um, to the, uh, the the columns you have up, and just kind of look through that and how I'm going to be working with those. So, so, so with, with um, one of the kind of directives you gave me in assembling this is, while some of this will be written kind of in script form, you're really not going to be working from a script. So the structure of this is just kind of bullet points, ideas, anything that will help you because you plan to sit there and kind of just give your expertise. So these were anything that would kind of be little, you know, bullet points or something to prompt you to expound on, you know, with your expertise, expound on the different different ideas. Right. So this isn't necessarily a script. Um, as you'll see, some of the stuff, for example, in, on this in this module under general theme, it does kind of fall into something that could be, you know, um, scripted or teleprompted for you. But I, you also can completely elaborate on that, you know, with your... Which, which is nice to have that because, it, I mean, I know for me when I write, it's kind of a jumping off point. You know, I almost have exactly. to start to take on the voice of what might be being said um, in order to get me so that I can, you know, now start to look at it in a more of a bullet point point of view. And obviously the next column is bullet points, and those are the things that uh, we're thinking we want to make sure we touch on during the interview session of, of this module. Right, right. And then um, the column that has additional notes of B-roll, uh, for the most part, B-roll I didn't really call out. Incidentally, this is probably the only one where I, I did mention some B-roll opportunities. But usually that column will be will be kind of used to show examples, for example, other films that I referenced um, that help kind of support some of the ideas and the bullet points. Um, and then the last column is, um, I'm hearing yes, mass denial. Sorry. So you're what? I'm hearing echo. I'm wondering if I should go to microphone. Oh, okay. No, I'm not hearing an echo, but yeah, feel free to go to the microphone. I'll keep talking. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, the, the last so, yeah, so column. The last, the last column is for uh, questions that you know an interviewer could ask you to kind of help you jump off in, into these different topics. Gotcha. Right. And so the interviewer will also have these bullet points and uh, and even make up questions on the fly if I'm not hitting the topics or. Trying to hide me. That way. Absolutely. Well, that was loud. What was that? I sound, I think your voice sounds different, but there's something very scratchy going on. All right. I don't know if that's any better, but that is better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, so moving on. So, so, so our first module is really is is designed to um, excite the filmmaker, let them know they can believe in themselves and start to give a lay of the land of as to what type of a filmmaker they might be for their next step and what type of filmmaker you know they maybe they've already thought about and what they want to work toward. Correct. Okay? Correct. Okay. And also, I mean, I guess in this one we're not really addressing it, but you know, we want to make clear that Filmmaking has never been more accessible, but we also, I think, want to introduce the idea of director being separate from filmmaking. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Director is is a specific role and is one of many that are are um, important to making a film. So, so we're going to set that up in this module. I thought we were no, reading. Just, not that not that I, that I think we should. I just was wondering. No, I just think that um, while we will, in this module, 
reference filmmaking, I think we want to make sure that we also reference um, the reasons why someone would want to become a director. While filming, uh, you know, gotcha. so like, you know, everybody wants to direct. You know, make sure that we reference directing more than we, re than we reference filmmaking. I see. I see. Okay. So, so just in, in maybe the language and not in an obvious sense, we start, I mean, I want to gear this toward um, the film director. And right. I want to be very clear that, and we'll talk about it in a bit, that there's kind of a tripod between the director, the cinematographer, and the producer. And so early on, um, make sure that the language and, and the voice of this is geared toward the first-time film director and how they can go and work onward toward their goals, and that's what you're describing here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I just maybe it wasn't so much in my bullet points, but that's why I made sure the prompt questions were why would someone want to become a film director and not a filmmaker. So I just want gotcha. to, you know. Yep. No, that's that's good because the the slant is uh, is important, and you and you hit the slant that I'm going for. Yep, I agree. All right. So where do we go to next after You this? want to look at the next module? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. To go or not to go. So this was kind of your idea, so why don't you take the, 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 the lead on this one and well, get into this a little bit. Yeah, I think it's an important it's it's an important topic to address because I think there's still that question of, uh, for any any budding filmmaker or director, um, there's still that question of whether they should go to film school or not. And I think, I think it's something that, if someone decides to take this course, clearly they're leaning towards not going to film school. But I just wanted That's to... That's interesting that you say that clearly they are, and, and I think in some ways I would agree with you, but... But I'm I'm not sure that I would make that assumption. I'm not sure it matters. But well, uh, uh, go ahead. No, and that's and maybe I misspoke there a little bit. But I I, I just wanted to. What I was going to say is, if someone is is using this course or has decided to to dive in and experiment with this, I think I think we should still address the pros and cons of going to film school. Um, I agree. And I also think that. Um, we might want to address um, why going to film school was probably more important maybe 30 or 40 years ago as it is to today. Right. So, um, so again, so I, I included a list here of probably, you know, if you were to do a top 10 list of best directors ever, I would say that many or all of these names would appear on that list. So I just wanted to reassure some budding filmmakers of um, you don't have to go to film school. So and here's here's a list of of directors that did not go to film school. Um, and I also found some quotes um, kind of supporting the reasons why they didn't go to film school. Um, but then just to to give voice to both sides, I did give a list of of directors, very well-known, great directors that did go to film school, and some of the reasons why they did go to film school. Um, and then I think it's really important to introduce why they went to film school in the time they did and reassure our student or our viewer that some of those reasons are a little archaic now. You know, uh, equipment's a lot cheaper. Um, right. um, most, most most films aren't are actually on film anymore, so it's ones and zeros. So you don't have to pay for film, you don't have to pay for processing, you don't have to pay for all that. So it's it's really become democratized, and it's really the loving the playing field has been leveled. So that's kind of what I wanted to introduce. Um, and as for the networking, basically the two reasons that most people give, most students give for going to film school are the hands-on experience with the equipment and to make connections and network. And I really think with the web and social media, you can find people that are like-minded that you can 
seek out and network with without having to go to film school these days. Right. So, so looking at this from a 30,000 uh, foot view, um, what we're looking at is not trying to convince you know, my, my objective will not be to try to convince the, the, the person one way or the other whether they should go or not, but instead um, just outline, you know, the, the pros and cons that, uh, you know, going or not going to film school has and, uh, right. and then let them, you know, make it their own. As, as with always, you know, processing this information, you know, information is key and then, you know, what you do with it and how you process it is, is the next step and the most important step because at the end of the day, you're the one who has to live with your decision, uh, so more, um, more knowledge is better. And that, so we're providing them knowledge. And, I'm, you know, I certainly have a point of view on, on this. Um, I, don't, I mean, I don't have a, an ultimate point of view, but I didn't go to film school, and so, you know, I certainly believe that people don't have to go to film school in order to be directors, uh, film directors, and I think that's one of the things that I want to get clear here now on, and also early on in this piece, and maybe if we haven't done it, maybe we can add a bullet point, because I'm not just talking about feature filmmaking here. I'm talking about the film maker, the, the, the film director that is using film directing skills in advertising, television commercials, in corporate videos, in, in um, short films. There's so many things that we're doing these days that knowing the language of cinema, and that's, that is so much of what we're talking about here. Um, can help us in communicating via the video camera and through the web. So um, that is really what I want to make sure we're clear on, that this kind of learning can be used in more than just you know going to Hollywood or making your next film festival film. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so next, what do we got? So that was 1.1, oh. to go to film school or not to go. Well, then there's one other little uh, branch off I w that would be nice at the end of that module, which is um, another way you can, a quick, easy way you can learn filmmaking is by watching other films. But maybe watching other films in a, in a way that you normally aren't used to. You know, the, the benefits of, and what you'll learn by watching a film with the sound off. You know, mm -hmm. and then also the benefits of watching a film with the picture off. And you'll see the strengths of, of for example, with the picture off, you'll see the strengths of how sound is used, how dynamic range when you have something low and you have something high, and you have, you know, music playing, what music can do, and also the absence of music or, or embracing silence. All that stuff that you can, you can, Learn a lot just by, you know, going down to your library or going on the Netflix and watching ten movies, you know. And then um, watching a film with the sound off, you you quickly learn about composition of, you know, wide shots, medium shots. The when you cut certain, you know, juxtapose, juxtapose certain shots together, all that stuff you can learn by just watching movies. I never went to film school, and um, when I first started really getting interested in film. Um, laser discs were first coming out, and I learned so much by watching the running commentaries on laser discs by having directors speak to why they did a certain thing or why they didn't do a certain thing. So now with Blu-rays and DVDs, you know, you know, running commentaries are just a treasure trove of information. So all right. that, all that stuff, you know, you can learn filmmaking without having to go to film school. Right, and I think I think one of the things, you know, the heart of that is, you described critical listening, critical viewing, and the, the, from the point of view, critical meaning, you know, going back to critical thinking, and in in that process, we have to take ownership and take responsibility for our own learning, and we have to dissect and and go into it because the films are made specifically for the purpose of entertaining people to engaging the audience and and so our first step as film directors is to take us out of that entertainment mode and now put a different hat on 
and and what you described there is you know just that process and I would add to that um, actually breaking us breaking the scenes down you know stopping and starting and 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 I can even share an example of what I did one of the, the ones that I did with Pulp Fiction or Godfather where I stopped and, and, and I plotted each and every different camera setup. You know, what seems like it was the same camera setup when you look at it closely was not because maybe, you know, the camera was in a slightly different place. It was a medium instead of a close shot, or it was just a different lens choice. But but it becomes a, it becomes a choice. It's different. And 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 making that that invisible visible is something that that's what an instructor in, in and a professor will do in film school, and, and we can do that on our own with this process you're describing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. So I think that's going to be that's going to be inspirational, um, you know. And whether people decide to go to film school or not, you know, uh, if they're you know this if they're looking at this before they're going or even after, you know, if they haven't done this kind of process, um, then they definitely should check it out so to inspire folks to do that and to give them some sort of framework as to you know people who are professional directors do do this and people who um, you know in, in film school this is what we do so yeah um, good stuff yep All right. I you might want to see my my smiling face so yeah let's put you on there, <laughs> there you go. since we, we don't want to look at the paper anymore right <laughs> yeah, we can we can cut back and forth from that. Matter of fact, after we get oriented to, to the uh, uh, the paper, you know, I think yeah, cutting back to us once in a while would be nice. Get sure. Folks to anybody who might be watching this. Um, all right. Well, so where are we going to next? Let's actually read the title out too, so we can orient. So the next module is um, basically asking the viewer: It's what do you want from filmmaking right now? So it's basically now. Trying to get the student um, or viewer, I don't know what we're going to refer to him or her as, but you know, just basically getting them to kind of look in, inward and figure out if they want to do filmmaking from a uh, fun perspective or from something that really would be a profitable uh, career path. Um, Can you so, bring that document up again? I'm sorry, I'm, yep, I'm just yep. it a little bit, just That's, even if it's just for a couple minutes. No, here, no, so, no so, that, so I was just introducing it, and then so here we go. So basically, ask yourself honestly, why do you want to be a filmmaker, or why do you want to be okay. a director? Gotcha. Why do, you, why do you want to be a director? So for fun or for more serious? Um, and then also plan to see that even if you're doing it for fun, it's work. You know, because it is. Um, even if you, you know, gather six friends together to go make a movie, you have to manage all six of those guys, keep them on task, and still make the movie that you want to make, even if it's for fun. So, knowing up front uh, that it's work, no matter which approach you take, I think is important too. So, yeah, exactly, exactly, and and I think. Uh, so some of the questions you have is why is it important for an aspiring film director to ask him or herself why they want to be a director? The other is what is the difference between a fun approach and a versus a serious approach? Okay, and film directing hard work, film directing you know, is film directing hard work regardless. Is it glamorous? What are the realities? So what do you want from filmmaking right now? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, and I think uh, that we're going to continue to, re, you know, by introducing this, we're going to continue, we're going to keep coming back to this throughout the whole process because I think that that's really important. You know, we can continue to have fun, but if we have expectations about where we want to go, then we have to continually ask ourselves the question and, and be clear and honest with ourselves about that and then making decisions that are going to take us on that path. Yeah, and I and I also think I added something late last night. We can again, see your we can see your face. Oh, you can. No, I said, can we see your face? I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you want. Commentary by Michael Swantek. What I would love okay. is every time we come back, like I've got either a different a different outfit on or <laughs> some kind of different cap or you know something. You may get your props ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much work, man. All right, so. The other thing that I will just say is um, 
is, and I don't, this is not supposed to be said to discourage, it's just supposed to be said to, um, to let the student know to be realistic. One of the things I added at the very last, I said um, not to get seduced by the myth of Hollywood. You know, because yes, the Oscars are held every February, but the other 364 days of the year, filmmaking is work, not glitz. You know, it's stale mm -hmm. coffee, it's 6 a.m. call times, it's unexpected weather, it's clock watching, it's making your day, it's, you know, compromise, it's, so it's, it's not all glitz. It's not you sit there with your megaphone and your chair and everything is dandy. You know, it's, 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 it's work, and you have to approach it with that in mind, and then you can, it's also so rewarding, you know, having a great day on set is one of the, the biggest highs you can have, you know, having a great day of filmmaking. So it's just, but you have to, I think, approach it um, that way, and that, that, that there's a lot more involved than just, you know, sitting there and loving life and, you know, that kind of thing. So, so I, I added that at the last minute last night um, gotcha. into, this mo into this module. And I think your segue, I noticed that the, the next module is the more fun approach. And so I was just thinking about that, that, yeah, I totally agree with you that for the serious filmmaker that, you know, it definitely is what you described. But I've also well, recognized over the vast number of years that there are also those, those handful, those, those filmmakers who are really in it for the fun. And... Um, it's been a little bit of an anomaly, I guess, if that's the word, or, or strange for me to take that in because I've taken this on as a, a, a more of a serious craft. While I've had fun doing it, I've been serious about it. And I have started to recognize that there is a whole different way of making film that's about the social aspects of it. And so I think that, you know, we want to be clear, and I think that some of what I'm going to be sharing will help those people who want to keep it fun, but also make it more fun because the product is, is a little bit better, you know, yeah. in the process. And, uh, but I think, you know, this next module, the fun approach, the module following that up, I believe, if I remember correctly, is the more serious approach. I think this is where we're going to look at that splitting of the road. And, uh, you know, we're going to get more clear about the fact that this is now starting to get geared toward people who are taking this a little more seriously and how these next steps uh, apply to them more than just the fun approach. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the most recent script, there is one module in your, um, let's see, let me just, before I say that, let me just make sure I'm right. Yep. Yeah, so, so before we go and branch off to the more fun approach and more serious approach, I did put in the Productions tripod. Um, oh, right, right. Action there. Which, well, again, that, these, these can move. In the document that I have, or? Uh, it should be in the one I sent over this morning. Maybe I didn't um, open up the right one. What do you think so this of one, filmmaking? Okay, let's take a look here. Version 4.9. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, somehow I opened the wrong one. Okay. So the the, uh, the production tripod, yeah, let's talk about, so what's in that, Mike? So basically, again, um, we're still planting that seed, so, you know, address to the, the viewer that before you decide... I'm oh, sorry, let me, let me interrupt you, just so I, I get oriented, if anybody's sure. watching this, then. What was the module just before this? The module before that was the, um, what do you want to get from filmmaking right now? Gotcha. Okay. So, and then the more serious or the more fun approach comes after this. Comes directly after this one. So this one can move. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, yep. it's All a module. Can move. Right. Exactly. So it's it's a module that can it's modular. It can it can move around. You can you know. So I just thought the flow would be to kind of um, again before you decide which path, you might want to become familiar with the the three main principles during a production. You know, the, the key members of that team, of the cinematographer, the DP, the producer, and the director. 
Right. So, right. and just basically the different roles, what happens, I think, sometimes is there is a blurring, and that's fine, especially a first-time filmmaker might have to wear multiple hats. Totally fine. But I think we want to at least make a clear distinction between the, the different roles of a producer, especially a producer and a director. Um, because director is more right brain. Um, it's more the creative, the intuitive, subjective parts, and you know the the um, the producer is going to be more of the left brain, the logistics of the production. Right. But but even the cinematographer falls into that regard too. When you you know if you look at the cinematographer, that you know they split their brain in. You know they have to deal if they don't have an AD or not an AD, but an AC on set, or somebody that's operating for them, they have to deal with the technical aspects of the equipment and, and the storytelling aspects of cinema. So, um, yes, I do agree with you, and I think that that's what we're trying to point out here, is that, you know, w there are different hats within these departments, and, and looking at these per role, and per their job responsibilities by delegating and, 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 and just categorizing these, it's easier for a filmmaker, a direct, you know, let's say a filmmaker for now, to start to look and say, yeah, I, if I have to do all these things and I'm doing them at a time when you know, problems or, or decisions need to be made, all of a sudden I'm making the decisions for you know, all these department heads uh, because I have all those hats on and it's a little overwhelming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, um, it's, it, it's also important to, to introduce, too, to that discussion of you may, during this process, process of discovery, you may find that your interests or your skill sets more are more closely related to the cinematographer or the Good producer, point. even though even though this is a, a course mainly geared towards directors. Um, but that's okay, I think. I think you know if you learn what a director does, that can only help in your approach to to the craft that you are interested in. Let's say cinematography, you know, or a cinematographer, you know. Knowing what the director has to deal with, and knowing what the what's in the director's head, and what they're you know struggling with on a on a minute to minute basis, can only help you in terms of your relationship with the director and what is required of or what the director is 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 asking of you. You know, so I think right. I think taking this course, even if you become a producer, I think taking this course is really essential. Well, that's a good point, I'm, and almost especially if you're going to become a producer, because yeah, because the producer really is the manager of of, of all of it. <laughs> yeah, and they well, you know, um, go we've ahead. talked about it in the past. You know, there's a reason why the Best Picture Oscar goes to the producer, not the director. You know, they're doing a lot of work too. They're not, you know, so it's and it's it's a logistical nightmare or a dream, depending on. On how, right. how movie how good the movie winds up being. Right, just because someone's directed doesn't necessarily mean that they were involved with the uh, the beginning of putting this film together and, exactly. and following this film all the way through, uh, through post production end. and and especially into the marketing of it. And the producer certainly was involved from the beginning of putting together the whole uh, package and through you know final uh, cut. On the film, um, in 99% of the way, in a, in a typical uh, Hollywood or even you know upper indie end uh, structure of filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, and it is kind of frustrating. Oh. I mean, we, we'll address it later, and I just need to bring it up now because it is one of my biggest frustrations. In that somewhere along the line, I don't know if it was Pauline Kael or, or or one of those other uh, film journalists, you know, they introduced this uh, or tour theory. Like the director is the author of the film, and I don't think there's another art that's more collaborative than filmmaking. You know, and it just becomes, you know, introducing the director as being the be-all and end-all of a film by, you know, Steven Spielberg or a film by Martin Scorsese. 
there are hundreds of people involved in those movies that are just as important, and it's such a collaborative art. It's you know, it's the the director is just one role played in the uh, in the production of the movie. Yeah, um, but I don't know that calling someone the author, you know, eliminates the um, acknowledgement that there's been a lot of collaboration. I do think from you know, an artistic point of view and a, from the point of view of vision that it is the director that has to be that, that, that artist glue, that vision glue that keeps everything, you know, with this, you know, that, 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 that does put it all together um, if it's done right. You know, we've all seen movies that are, you know, somebody else, you know, goes in and edits or takes over the film and, you know, it becomes just this, you know, mosh-up of um, images and sounds that are supposed to fit together, but when it's really done, it doesn't really have a life of its own. There's nothing, there's not a being there, and I think in a way a film is a being, and the author, the director, does uh, create that, you know, shapes that being in a, in, in a very large way. Yes. <laughs> I think... Uh... Well, you're an editor, so now we're... Uh... Well, no, I'm not, but I'm not no, but I've also I've also directed, and I and I no, I just I agree with you. I think the good directors are the ones that embrace the collaborative parts of filmmaking. You know, the good directors are the ones that that surround themselves. You know, you know, cast good people, hire good a good DP. You know, work with a good producer, and let them do their part. You know, and I I I, I just. Yeah, the auteur theory bothers me sometimes. It does. It does. I, I don't know. I just feel like... But anyway, let's... We're going off on a tangent. So. <laughs> so um, All right. Let's, let's move on. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, no, I just... um. So, basically, so that module is all based around um, kind of the different roles of those three players. And that's just talking about production. It's not talking about pre-production and those players or post-production and the players involved in that. But the production aspect... Those three people, cinematographer, producer, director, they're, they're, they're very key, and, but they all wear completely different hats. So, all right, so now we're on to module 1-4, and that is um, the more fun um, approach. So, so you had... You had given me some uh, specific things that if someone is is gearing towards making a, f a film for the first time for fun, you had a couple ways that you thought that they should approach that. You still there? Acknowledging that you can do a fun approach or a more serious approach, and this is where we start to get into the more fun. And actually, I think what I want to describe here is that we're going to, uh, I think, making three short films fast is something anyone who's beginning directing should get into. So um, this module is really going to be geared toward that beginning director and uh, getting an idea how to... See, Mike says he's back. Oh, there you go. So he must be sitting on the other end, and I just can't see I'm back because I'm, I'm looking back. at... All right, good. So I just kept yeah. talking because I noticed you went away, and I said, it's going to end the session, but I kept it going on. So I was in the middle of saying that um, this more fun approach module looks like we're going to gear this you know, really toward that beginning director. Whether they're serious or not, if they're just starting out, 